Universal Huntress. So this camp is named Kamahara Camp. It's one of Winterzoek's four camps. Mm -hmm. um, this camp is in the Green Kalari, right in the northern part of South Africa, um, in the northern Cape province. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're about 100 miles from the Botswana border and um, yeah, this, this area gets quite a bit more rainfall than the rest of the Kalari, so, so it's, that's, it's quite lush and yeah. beautiful, beautiful camel thorn acacia trees, lots of game, plenty of game and uh, tracking is great here, it's sandy, mm -hmm. so uh, we'll probably spend most of the time on foot here, which is great Which hunting. is great. So yeah, we're looking yeah. forward to it. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to today, so we should get hunting. Yeah. All right. Hey, camera girl, if you look behind you, there's about a branch that's going to knock you over. Yeah. <laughs> well, better catch up with the pH, but we spotted a Gibbs bug, and I think we just spooked him. But we've got word that there was a... Uh, buffalo that from the past camp. Uh, the hunters actually had wounded him, so we have a wounded buffalo roaming around, and I can't help but keep looking over my shoulder to see if uh, he's around. And uh, that's one thing that we definitely don't want to encounter is a buffalo that's angry because he is wounded, so better catch up with our pH. Here, then he just started walking slowly. But he's walking into this direction here. Yeah. The grass is quite thick to follow his tracks while yeah. he's walking. But we'll just kind of walk, walk in the direction where it went into. Okay. Okay, but this area here, yeah, it burnt last year. Oh. So you can see it's a little bit more open. Yeah. And again, they love this new leaves that mm -hmm. comes, comes out. So mm -hmm. there's usually quite a bit of game in this area. Yeah. This is typical for a blue wildebeest to make his territorial marking here. Yeah? You'll see he's, he's digging it out like this and then he's, he poops inside there as well. Huh. And he'll come here every day. If you actually want a big wildebeest pool, you can just wait here somewhere. Huh. You'll find him here every day. It's kind of like warthogs back home. They do that little, yeah. those little pockets. is a country girl. With her cowboy boots plowing through the unknown, the spitfire pistol of the guns duo, she's loud, rowdy, fearless, and the life of the party. But don't let her fool you. She has the business sense of girls with guns. She can chomp the numbers as good as she does her chew. She is the first to lead the team out of a plane, off of a bridge, or any leap of faith that comes their way. Narissa Harmon, she is the mama of the group the sensitive one who appreciates the beauty of life. She's had to fight for everything she has ever had, and because of that, her character is as strong as Oak. Though a little more reserved, she is still the creative heart of the Girls With Guns duo. She will be the first to question anything outside of her comfort zone, but don't get her wrong. Her faith is strong, and she too, with a little convincing, steps out into the wild journey. Emmanuel Cap, better known as Cappy, has had many hunting excursions all over the world filming nature and culture. 
Cappy is the experienced leader of the ladies. He is a wild spirit and full of humor, just waiting for the next opportunity to make everyone laugh out in the field. He's patient enough to wait for the girls while they put their makeup on, strong enough to guide them through the unknown, and creative enough to capture unique beauty and everything behind a lens. Together, they are Universal Huntress. Just stand still. Just stand still. There we go. Yeah! Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was awesome. It's a beautiful, beautiful bull. <laughs> oh. It's beautiful. Holy cow. Woo! That's How long a, were we there? That's a serious games block right there. Yep, I'm crying. Okay, let's just, guys, let's just stand here. Yeah? I don't want these other ones to see us here. Yeah. Sorry. They probably heard us. I might pass out right now. <laughs> that was a great shot. We did it. One thing is patience. If you don't have patience, you can forget about it. I feel like my arms are going to fall off the <laughs> camera. I hope you know what you shot, because I don't think you have any idea. How big he is. How big He's... This is. Look at this. Unbelievable. Oh. And this one is way above the average game stock that we've got here. Wow. Look how heavy it is in the bottom there. I'm so happy. Really, really pretty. It's really big. Yay. Today we set out on a whole nother ranch and we're in pursuit for some gems buck this morning. We sat about, I would say, four hours and started watching this big old group of different Gims bucks and um, this one played a little bit of tricks on us and he was a little bit sneaky. I wanted to make sure that I was going to get the correct bull, you That's know, right. yeah. and so that yeah. was a little bit nerve-wracking for me. Yeah, because there was two bulls in there and it was yeah. about 20, 20 females and, um, you know, and I kept on moving around like mm -hmm. this so it was, mm -hmm. it was tough but you, the, the big, the most important thing was that you stayed patient and mm -hmm. you, you kept your calm pretty good. And then eventually he came out and he stepped out and he made a perfect shot. Yeah, I kept my calm pretty good until the end when I started screaming and <laughs> almost passed out. <laughs> I just passed out just because I knew, you know, first off that I really wanted one of these and second off, just sitting there like you said, mm -hmm. you know, and, yeah. and, and being patient and, you know, just really hoping that I make first off for me was, you know, off the shooting sticks was a good shot. And um, you know my placement, and make sure that I was calm. The hey. Thanks, dude. Thank you. So this morning we're hunting at Vintershook Safaris with our PH Ivan, and tell us what we're after this morning. Well, Jen, um, we saw a big springbok ram running across here, and uh, I don't see him anymore. But it's no normally we went to there's quite a few springbok in that area as well. And then there's also good black wildebeest that ran also in there. So I think we might have a pretty good chance of getting either or. Awesome. Um, we had a pretty good day yesterday and we're looking forward to another day. Absolutely. Always a good time here. So we're excited. So follow us and uh, let's go get some animals. <laughs> Here we go, I'm in shorts and a t-shirt. <laughs> and a jacket. <laughs> and a vest. And three layers. <laughs> Can I have a look and see what's on this side? Because the wind's going to be a bit better for us, yeah? Okay. But there is black wilder bears, springbuck, gamesbuck, red outer bears. Yeah. Everything. We got a perfect line of trees from here to the black the base, but the wind is kind of angling just past them. Okay. But uh, we won't be able to come into the wind towards them. It's too open on that side. So you think it'll be about 300 yards? Uh, it might be closer. It won't okay. be more than that. Okay. Okay. Let's do it.
comes back up, back up, yes. I'm very curious. If you, if you let them see you, and you pretend you didn't see them, and you just kind of zigzag, zigzag towards them, sometimes you can get pretty close to them. Okay. Just pretend you're not a human being, so you got a wolf. <laughs> like a scarecrow. I can do that. Okay. So we'll just, we'll just walk in that direction. We, okay. might, we might get close enough. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Trick only works once or twice a year until they figure you out. <laughs> <laughs> and then no more. <laughs> yeah. What are we gonna do? Well, Jen, um, we're gonna walk down this dry riverbed. Wind's pretty good. And then um, in this area here, there's everything here. There's, uh, it opens up into a flat plain in the bottom here. And it's a lot of green grass. You'll, you might see a lot of buffalo there, rhinos, oh, wow. I love that. But along the way, I'm sure we're gonna try for a springbuck or impala or whatever, whatever comes up. Okay. But it's it's a really, really um, rich environment for game, yeah. So. Awesome, I, we saw a lot when we were coming in, so yeah. hopefully we can find them. Yeah, we saw blazebuck, gamesbuck, springbuck, impala, and they were all running down towards where we're going, going to go now, so. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, let's go. Is he down? Perfect. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yes, yes, yes! <laughs> we get a little shaky. You won't get closer to a spring mug than that, I promise you that. <laughs> there goes the other one. <laughs> Great stuff. Good shit. Thank you. Good patience there. <sighs> That's the most important thing is your patience. You gotta be patient. The breathing right. Afterwards, I get the like shake. <laughs> as soon as I pull the trigger, I'm like. <laughs> we'll just give him a moment to die, and then we'll walk up. I've never even seen one closer. Hey, they're beautiful. Eh? Unbelievable. Okay. <laughs> Oh, they're little. That's a beauty. I wonder if I should have held a little low. No? Okay. I said, I'd, would it, should I have held lower? <laughs> <laughs> you might have had a little bit too high, but yeah. that's all right. They're so small. Yeah, I didn't realize, because I know I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh. Look at that. He's awesome. Very nice old ram. Wow. I 
look at the most important thing here. So beautiful. Look at this. Look at the area. Oh. Wow. Have a look at that. They're beautiful. Look, yeah. It's going to open up. Kapi, come see pronk now. This is... Every springbok does this when they when they go, when their life is out of them. This opens up. Really? And it'll even go more. Why? And I'll show you. It's just, it's called a pronk. And they do that as well when they impress, try to impress the females, they open up the air. Or when predators chase them, they uh, make themselves look bigger by doing this. Oh, wow. But uh, smell, smell inside here. Yeah. Put, your, put your nose in there. I can see something. Just smell it. It smells good. It's like cotton candy. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So we had an awesome morning. Uh, originally we were after some springbuck or wildebeest. That was quite the stock. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that before. And um, we ended up coming down to the riverbed and walking through. We saw quite a few animals and um, Ivan spotted this larger spring buck and you said he was an older male? Very old, yeah. He's probably about eight years old if I have to guess, yeah. Okay, you see this part here mm -hmm. that you're looking at? This is, if you look at this piece that comes up before it starts turning outwards, that's where you look for a spring buck when it gets mature, when it goes straight up like that. Otherwise they would start from here? Yeah, otherwise they'll start right out from here when they're yeah. young and they'll start coming out like this. Okay, <sighs> so when they get old they get this straight little piece here. And that makes it very unique. And then obviously then the other, the other where you score your other inches is, is in the cool. You made a hell of a shot, Jen. Congratulations. Thank you. Great stuff. We're here at African Sand Taxidermy with uh, Peter, the plant manager, and Fritz, the taxidermist. Pretty awesome day. Um, Nurse and I are really excited to look at all of this and start this process from start to finish with you guys. Nice to meet you guys and nice to have you here. What a big boy. Once the skulls are dried, clean, they're oxide, we would then take these skulls into the process, which is further. If they're properly salted and skinned, they can last for years. What happens is those dry salted skins that you saw that side goes into soaking first. Soaking is just water, it just rehydrates the skin. Then everything gets cut thinner, either by hand or on the machines. After the skin has been cut thinner to about two to three months, it goes into your tanning process, either for capes or for flat skin. You see, it's about an inch thick. You can't work with the skin in the... You can't mount it because how do you move the skin? How do you put detail in? Yeah. So this skin is going to be cut until it's about two moles thick. All right, where to next? Tanning. Yeah, Tanning. So what happens is the skin gets cut thinner, as you just saw in a tannery. Then that wet skin gets stretched on these frames. You just put, this is called the toggle unit. You put the toggles on, you can pull the skin as tight as possible to make it bigger as well, basically. So you stretch the whole skin. Then it dries on this frame. So they have been tanned but they're still not soft. So this is still just the skin, just the underneath that yes. we just saw him cutting? So this has all been cut thin, it's been tanned, but it's hard. Then it goes into your second drum, they, which you call your milling drum. In the milling drum is sawdust, and, this, and that movement for about eight hours with the sawdust, that's what makes the skin soft. These skins, you want them to stay soft. Your um, stuff that you mount in the mounting area, you want the skin to go hard over the mold. You saw that zebra skin now that was like cardboard, you can oh. feel the skin is soft now, but it still doesn't look nice at the back. So what we're going to do now, we're going to trim the skin neatly, and this is going to be buffed. We're going to sand all this excess stuff off to make the skin nice. The skin is basically done now. All that's going to happen now is we're going to trim it, mm -hmm. and if there's any holes or patch, um, they're going to stitch it and just patch it. This one has been trimmed now, uh -huh. and it's been buffed. So it's soft and And this is how clean. it goes to yeah, the client. This is how go to the client. Okay, this is the mold making section. We have fiberglass molds for all the animals that in Africa, basically. If we don't have something, I'll sculpt it out of clay and make a fiberglass copy of that clay sculpture. And we can cast as many of them as we want. Um, and that's what the skin gets pulled over yeah. and the animal mounted on. Guy at mounting, he will put putty in for the eyes and then he put the glass eyes in. A little bit of clay for detail to make this eyebrow, clay for the nose. 
play for the ears. Wow, it's really an art. So really, everything's natural on it except for they put the fiberglass in the ears, the and glass the, eyes. The glass eyes, yes. And everything else is yeah, the we, original animal. Yeah, the, the skin and the horns, wow. basically. Basically, this is the finishing area. After the animals have been mounted and stick, they dry on these racks for about six weeks until they completely dry. Okay, I want to shoot one of those. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we're just doing a final check on them, cleaning them, and then we all crate it up in wooden crates and go down to the plane to the different destinations. I hear shopping in my future. But I will start. I will start yeah. Look at that. Can we come back and go shopping, Cap? I did two fingers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> inky, 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 Whoops, sorry, ants. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs>